Christ's church is not a society of equals. You see, right there is the main motivation for this right here, Alexandrian philosophy. It sets up a multiple-tiered religious system. You see, you have the educated, the ones that can interpret the original Greek. You know, what, oh, the, the, this manuscript here and this papyrus fragment there, and, and we don't really know for sure, and you have to come to me to know what the Bible really says and really teaches. See, it sets up that system. This is Roman Catholicism over here. It's that system. For over a thousand years, the Roman Catholic Church only had the Latin Vulgate, Jerome's Latin Vulgate, okay? And they controlled the laity with it. Most of the people throughout the Dark Ages couldn't read. And why? Because the Catholic Church could control them. You know what the greatest fear of Roman Catholicism is? Right there. This King James Bible, again, scientifically proven fact, this King James Bible has caused more damage to Roman Catholicism than any war or any economic hard times or anything. Okay? And they even talked about it in the introduction. They talked about that this will give such a blow to that man of sin as shall not be recovered. Okay? The man of sin they were referring to was the Pope. All right? The translators knew that. This is the greatest threat to Roman Catholicism. That's why they have introduced all of these perversions. And as I said, you can trace it back. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's not some kind of an unproven, whimsical notion that I had one night or something. It's proven. Okay? Look at your footnotes in your new versions. It talks about the two oldest manuscripts, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. It's proven. It goes back to the Catholic Church. Okay? The Catholic Church promotes the new versions. It's right there. The NIV was partly translated at a Catholic university. All this was proven in my Real Bible Version Issue Exposed videos. I can't help you if you, if you, just, if you will not accept this truth. There's not, not much I can do for you. Okay? But now there are two reasons, okay, why the Catholic Church, and, and I will say, they will reveal, they'll revere, they'll talk about the sacred scriptures, oh, the sc sacred scriptures and things like that. So don't be fooled over here when people that profess, you know, they, they defend the new versions, they'll be very reverend with, reverent with, the new versions many times. They'll talk about them being the sacred, the holy word of God and everything. Yeah, just like the Catholics do. But tradition comes in there and plays a part. But there are two reasons why the Catholic Church does not want a final authority in the hands of the common man. Number one, this over here leaves loopholes to sin, to get away with it. You see, this one says, you know, this, you shouldn't do this. This one says you should. This one says you shouldn't. This one says you should. So who's to really say for sure? See, you go along and you prefer one Bible over another. Well, this verse here I prefer out of the NIV. I, I prefer this one out of the New King James. I prefer this one out of the Reader's Digest Bible. I prefer that one out of the New Revised Standard Version. See, it leaves a loophole. You are your own God at that point. Okay? There is no, thus saith the Lord. It's, thus saith my preferences. I do what feels right. I go with the version that most appeals to me. See? That's the number one problem. Okay, but secondly, which I referred to a little bit earlier, a perfect King James Bible, a perfect book that can be called God's Word, that puts us all on the same level, doesn't it? The man up in the pulpit there, or the priest, or the bishop, or the pope, can be judged by the common man down there without even a high school education. And there are many great men of God that didn't even have a high school education, much less a Bible college education. Grade school education, D.L. Moody, Billy Sunday. Both men went on to great works for the Lord. Why? Because of a book. And common men have used this book. And isn't it interesting that Jesus Christ was heard most by common men? And it's the common man today that uses and believes this book. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. You ought to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 sometime too, to, by the way, to see what the Lord thinks about educated, powerful, influential people as opposed to the poor 
people. And look too in the Gospels where Jesus talks about preaching to the poor. Okay? And also, <clears throat> also in the book of Acts. Time and time and time again, they're going to the poor. They're going to the simple. They're not going to the elite. All right? But now I just want to go over something else here. There were three groups of men that Jesus had trouble with the whole time down here. Three groups. Okay, who were they? Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. And then, of course, there were other ones too. The Herodians, you know, and the lawyers and things. I realize that. But the three main groups that Jesus went after, that they were always, always on him, always attacking him, always trying to, to make him look bad, always asking him questions. That's another thing. Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes. But now, what are the mani modern manifestations of Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes? Oftentimes, the liberal professing Christian will try to put the title Pharisee on a Bible believer. Okay, I'm going to show you that that's not true. We're going to go first to Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. Here we read, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not holding the tradition of the elders. Notice it was not the word of God. Okay, they didn't say, you know what it says back in the book of Exodus, or it says back in the book of Leviticus, they didn't say it. The tradition of the elders. They held tradition above the word of God. Let's continue on. Verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Okay? Now look down at verse 13. It says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. You see, a Pharisee is somebody that holds traditions above the Word of God. So who would be your modern manifestation of a Pharisee? Catholics. And you can read Catholic writings. They will talk about sacred tradition having equal authority to that of sacred scripture. That's the group. That's your modern day Pharisee. And by the way, there are many people within professing Christianity which also hold traditions above the authority of Scripture. There's a lot of them out there. Okay, I live in an area where it's very prevalent. All right, we have a lot of people around here, Amish in particular, that hold the traditions of the elders. That's what they even call them, the, the men of the church, the elders and things, the bishop. They hold their traditions above that of Scripture. Okay? And a lot of them are lost. You say, oh, oh, now, come on. My family's been here, goes back in this area. We go back before a lot of the Amish got here. Okay, I was raised around them. You're not going to tell me things about the Amish. Okay, I know what's going on with the Amish. What? They hold their traditions above the Word of God. Just like Catholics do. You say, well, then King James Bible, King James only people are, are Pharisees. No, we're not. We hold the scriptures in the highest regard. And we break down traditions that don't line up with scripture. If there are traditions, and, and you say, well, how, what about King James onlyism? Show me through church history where they were using multiple versions. That didn't even show up. Show me where 
the philosophies and the, and the statements that the New ver Version Christians, show me in Scripture where that was at. Well, a better translation would be, well, no translation is inspired. Well, actually, the Greek word there really does mean, show me it. This thing only showed up here since this whole philosophy became popularized by Westcott and Hort. Okay? Before that, it wasn't around. Before that, people held to the authority of one book. Okay? And, oh, it wasn't the King James Bible. Yeah, I know that. Obviously. Okay, the King James Bible was translated 1611. What did they have before that? Well, there were many other translations back then. Okay, but they came from the right type of manuscripts and from the right type of philosophy. Okay, many of the early Christians, the Waldensians, dating back to the first century, they had their own Bible. Okay, they weren't walking around with multiple versions and, and making a version to appease the feminists and making a version to appease the youth and a, one to appease the elderly and things like that. They weren't doing that. Okay, you have no argument if you're a new versionist. But let's look at the second group, the Sadducees. Now, what did they deny? Mark chapter 12 verse 18 says, Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection, and they ask him, saying, Okay, so who do you have as the Sadducees? Well, that would be your modern, liberal, professing Christian. People that deny miracles, people that deny heaven, people that deny resurrection. Okay, another part it says about that they denied, the Sadducees also denied uh, the spirit and angels. That's your, your modern day, liberal, uh, ecumenical type, uh, World Council of Churches, Federal Council of Christian Churches, that type of people. Those are the ones that are your Sadducees, okay? And, and guess who they attack, by the way? They attack Bible believers. Fundamentalists, you know, as they say. But I'm going to show you a clip here from the Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. I'm going to show you a clip of Westcott, who was one of the fathers of this school of thought over here. I'm going to show you a clip to prove that he was a Sadducee. Here it is. On page 52, Westcott said, I never read an account of a miracle, but I seem instinctively to feel its improbability and discover some want of evidence in the account of it. In volume 2, page 49, Westcott gives his views on heaven. He writes, It saves us from the error of connecting the presence of Christ's glorified humanity with place. Heaven is a state and not a place. On page 394, Westcott states, If Tennyson's idea of heaven was true, that heaven is the ministry of soul to soul, we may reasonably hope by patient, resolute, faithful, united endeavor to find heaven about us here, the glory of our earthly life. Now, is there any doubt that, that Westcott, Brooke Foss Westcott, was a Sadducee? Not believing in heaven? Well, I can tell you I know why he didn't believe in heaven. It's because he's not going there, and he didn't go there. Okay? Westcott and Hort were lost. And the, by the way, the clips in that video that I just showed you there were photo-scanned pages from their books. Okay? They weren't my writings. They were their writings.